Hi guys, it's Tara and welcome back to Crafting with Curly Cues. Today I have a really sweet springtime Easter project for you um, using some My Favorite Things. So I am participating in the My Favorite Things color challenge, so that was where the inspiration for this card came from. As you can see, I'm starting with a craft card base and then I've got some Nina Solar White cut to the size of a normal A2 card. And I'm going to go ahead and take these skit stitched scallop border dies by Lawn Fawn and there are three in the pack and I'm going to use the largest one and the medium one and I'm going to go ahead and trim the front of my card and that Nina panel down to create kind of a scallopy layered look so I'm going to use my grid mat on my craft mat here to line that up to make sure I've got that straight and then put some post-it tape on there to hold it in place while I run it through my big shot and I'll put that Nina panel right next to it so that I can see how much um, I want showing of the white underneath the craft of that large scallop there. So I was trying to use the Big Shot on camera for you guys, but it turns out that I just, the way that my camera setup is, I just don't have room for my Big Shot, so I had to do it off camera. So when I take that off, you can see how adorable these little stitched scallops are. I think they're so precious, and you can see how cute that's going to be when it's all layered up there. So now that that's taken care of, I'm going to use this too Cute for Words Some Bunny stamp set from My Favorite Things. I've had this stamp set for over a year and I've never used it, so I was super excited to bust it out. And I am going to take my Misty and I'm going to do some stamping. So I'm going to take this sweet little bunny that's kind of looking over her shoulder and place it right in the middle of the card and then go ahead and ink it up with some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. So this is a pigment ink. It stamps super crispy and it's pretty good for most types of coloring. I wouldn't use it with Copics, but otherwise it's waterproof. It's good to go. Um, here's my new Lawn Fawn stamp chamois. I'm telling you guys, this is pretty stellar. So it's wiping that pigment ink off there. No problem. There's no little fuzzies left. I mean, it's, it's worth it. It's worth the investment. So you know, just saying. This is the first time I've used it and I freaking love it. So now I'm going to take these other two little bunnies. This set has so many bunnies in it. Like I wanted to create a huge scene, but I just didn't have room on my card. And I'm going to make it so that all these little bunnies are holding hands. And the beauty of the Misty is I can put those right where I want them on my card, pick them both up at once, and then I can ink everything up and stamp it all at the same time. And then I forgot you can see that little bunny on the left the top of her ears did not stamp very well but because it's the misty and everything's in the exact same spot I can just ink it back up and re-stamp it there's that magic chamois again love it I'm just like like amazed watching it wipe that ink off there it's like perfect I just I I heard the buzz and I was like okay I'm gonna get one but I don't know how much better it's actually going to be than my baby wipes and I gotta tell you I was pretty blown away. So um, if you're on the fence about it, let me tell you, I'm pushing. I'm pushing you off the fence onto the other side. You should definitely get a Lawn Fawn stamp chamois. So anyway, there is my sentiment. I'm going to use the big Sum Bunny. So the set, the set comes with that Sum Bunny and then all these sweet little smaller sentiments you can pair up with it. Um, and I chose to go with the Sum Bunny Wishes You Were Here. And one thing that I wanted to do was make sure that my sentiments were squished up really nice and tight and close to each other. So that was another reason I wanted to use my Misty so that I could just take the guesswork out of getting those sentiments lined up perfectly. So at the end, I'm going to put a little um, enamel heart as part of the sentiment. And so that's why I kind of have the somebody off to the side. And then that longer sentiment is going um, out there to the right. And I'll fill in that little hole later. But... So now that my stamping is all done, I'm going to go ahead and take that off and then I'm going to start with my coloring. So this video is mostly coloring and I was wanting to use my Prismacolors and I love, love, love Prismacolor on craft. It's one of my absolute favorite looks, but I really want to get better at my colored pencil coloring and I'm super inspired by Julia Alterman over at Just One More Card and I'm going to link to her YouTube channel in my description. Um, so make sure you check that out because she is like a colored pencil guru. So she has taken a bunch of classes on it and um, just teaches it so well and her images just always look so amazing with the colored pencil coloring. So. I was super inspired to want to try to get better at my colored pencil coloring by her. And I will tell you guys, I am a novice through and through. I have taken no classes on this. I've just kind of watched other people do it and I'm trying to mimic what I see. 
Um, I've been doing colored pencils on craft for a while and just kind of winging it, but I'm trying to get even better. So this was definitely a big practice project. And the color challenge that I'm participating in um, made me kind of took the guesswork out of my color palette. So it was kind of nice because I knew going in exactly what colors I was going to have to use. So I knew I could use this technique that I'm maybe not super awesome at yet, but let this be the chance to get better at it. So per Julia Alterman and her awesome instruction on colored pencil coloring, I am working in crazy, crazy layers here. So sorry about the blurriness of the camera. In a second here, I'm going to figure out that that's doing that and I'm going to refocus it. But for the time being, it's a little bit blurry. And I did obviously speed this up super, super fast because this took me a long time to color. Because of the nature of working in layers, you can see I'm already on like my third layer here. It takes a while, but colored pencil looks so much better when you work in layers. So rather than pushing super hard at the beginning to try to get all the color that you want, if you just come in with a nice light hand for the first couple of layers, and then continue to go over and over it. And then on that last layer, so this is like my third layer, I'm finally applying some good pressure so that I can make sure that everything is nice and covered the way that I want it. So ultimately I wanted these to be white bunnies because white is one of the colors in the color challenge. So it's like craft, white, like a pretty peach color, and then like a mint color. But, um, I wanted to go ahead and use my white on these bunnies here. So I was wanting some shadows, but I also wanted them to be white bunnies. I don't know if they totally look like white bunnies or if they maybe look like light gray bunnies. Either way, I think they turned out super cute. And I'm even trying to get fancy with my light source kind of coming in from the, like the top left there, I guess a little bit. I don't, I don't know. I'm usually not super picky about that kind of stuff, but I was like, you know, if I'm going to work really hard on my coloring, Maybe I'll try to get fancy with my light source. So this was just a fun coloring experiment for me. And I am a coloring enthusiast. I love to color. So it was totally cool with me that I sat there for legit an hour and colored bunnies. I mean, some people might think that's a little bit overkill. But for me, that is a total relaxer. It's what I like to do. It takes the stress away. I just kind of end up fading away into the coloring. So it's pretty pretty fun to do that for me. So I'm coming in one more time with one more layer and getting all kinds of really good color on there and really making sure that these bunnies are nice and white. So let's see here. Yep. Still color in the white. Gosh, guys, it's so, it's so much layering. It's just, it really, it really pays off though. I mean, it really is nice to see all the different layers and how they build up the color. So now for her little dress, I'm going to start, and here's where I'm going to start incorporating a couple of those other colors from the color challenge. So I'm going to color the little dress like in a mint color. You can see I'm using um, the other trick that I decided to try that um, Julia Alterman always has these super, super, super sharp pencils, and I'm pretty bad about sharpening mine regularly. So I got my Prismacolor pencil sharpener out there, and I have that off to the side. And I'm making sure that I sharpen my pencils as I'm working with them. And let me tell you, it actually did make a world of difference. So um, I would recommend keeping a good pencil sharpener close by and keeping your pencils nice and sharp as you're doing this. And that Prismacolor pencil sharpener um, that I've linked to below and over at my blog is a really good one. I've had really good luck with it on my Prismacolors. It doesn't seem to break the tips, um, which is really nice since Prismacolors are kind of softer than a lot of other pencils. So anywho, so on this dress, that darkest color that I'm using is kind of not mint, but when I go back over it with my more mint tones, it definitely tones down and looks like a shadow of, of that mint color. So I ended up getting a really pretty color that I thought went pretty well with the color challenge. And then I'm doing um, the collar of this middle bunny in the mint, and then I'll do the dress on the third bunny in the mint also, just because normally, see, this was what was good for me too about the color challenge, because usually I get like this weird OCD thing and I feel like I'm being lazy if I put the same color on all the dresses. So I would have probably picked out different colors for each bunny, which would have been cute, but it, it might've been too busy or something. But 
because it was the color challenge, I was like, no, I'm going to use these two colors. This is what I'm using. So it kind of forced me to get outside of my box a little bit and um, go ahead and follow that, that challenge more. And I really liked the end result. So I'm going to try to do more challenges. I've been lately really participating in those, and I think it really helps me um, really focus my craft mojo because I do have kind of limited time to craft because I work full time. So sometimes that's almost intimidating to me because I know I only have so much time and it's like I want it to be the perfect project. And so I like intimidate myself out of crafting. I don't know. It's kind of a silly mental thing that I do. But by participating in a challenge, it kind of takes all of the pressure off because really I'm just trying to be inspired by that challenge that I've chosen to participate in. So it's kind of a nice way to, to just relax for me and sometimes get out of my comfort zone. Like I kind of did with these dresses and the fact that I'm using the same colors on the dresses. So now I'm using that peach color and I've got just three different shades for every color, all the coloring that I'm doing, I'm using three different shades. So I have a darkest, a medium and a lightest. And I always start as you have already seen with the darkest and then layer in the medium and then layer on the light on top and then go back and do it again and go back and do it again. And I found with this peach, like on this dress that this darkest one wasn't, um, super, super dark. So to get the shadows, I really kind of had to push a little bit harder than I was on some of the other ones. Um, just to make sure that that shadow showed up on that, that peach color. But I really like the melony peach color that it turned out. So now I'm going to do that last color and I'm almost done with the coloring. You guys are probably like, oh my goodness, I've been watching this coloring forever. Let me tell you, this is like four times too. This, this real life coloring would have, you know, it was, it was quite the, quite the project. So anyway, for the ground now, I've got a couple of warm grays and I've listed all the different colors that I used over on my blog. So if you guys are interested in the specific colors, I'm trying to get better about writing down the actual colors that I'm using for you guys. You can hop over there and check it out. And I'm using some warm grays for the shadows and I'm putting just a little bit more shadow underneath those bunnies. And then I'm coming in with my blender pencil. And I think this is a really good investment if you have the Prismacolors and you like to color with them without Gamsol because it just kind of takes the, um, it takes the harshness out of it and blends them all together, which I think looks really cool. So now, as you can see on these bunnies, because those Prismacolors are so waxy and the color's so opaque, a lot of those stamped lines kind of blended away and disappeared. Like they don't really have faces anymore. So I'm coming in with a Faber-Castell um, pit brush marker. So this is the bold. It's a smaller, like fine line, but it's the bold one. And I'm just tracing back over all of those lines. So this is an Indian ink. It does, it does pretty good on top of the Prismacolors. It wasn't smearing very much. And then when it dries, it dries permanent, which is awesome and won't smear. So I just went back over all of these um, stamped images and put the black lines back on all three bunnies. And I think that really made them pop. I usually do this with my gel pen, my black gel pen. And I was like, you know, I think I'm going to try it with this... Um, this Faber-Castell marker, and I like this much better. It almost looks like a like an illustration in a children's book when it's all done. I like the bold black line. So now that the coloring's all done, I'm going to take my Lawn Fawn Perfectly Plaid Paper Pad, and isn't that fun to say? My Perfectly Plaid Paper Pad. I love this paper. When I saw it at the store, I had to snag two packs because I was so afraid I would use it all up, and when I went to get more, they'd be sold out, that I just, ha I'm hoarding it now. So I think it's so pretty. And I'm just going to put all kinds of adhesive on the back of that. And I'm going to put that on the inside of my card. So it's cut to the size of an A2 card base. And I'm putting it on the inside. And then I'm going to take that piece of Nina that we trimmed earlier with that Lawn Fawn Stitch Scallop Border and put some adhesive on the back of it. And then that is also going on the inside of my card. So this is a super unique card in that the front flap of the actual card is cut really short and is part of the design. So you have that really awesome white space inside to write on up underneath that flap. But then when it's closed, the front of the card is part of the design of the whole card. So it's just a little bit of a unique um, design layout here. So I'm trimming that up because a couple of those papers were just a little bit bigger and sticking out the side. So you can kind of see here how this is opening its... Um, showing you a little bit of a 
preview there of what the inside's like. I went ahead and chomped the corners with my half inch corner rounder and um, just to add a little bit of something to the bottom. And this card is just about done. So you can see here when you open it, it leaves you plenty of room to write a message up on the inside top and you can't see it from the front. But then when you close it, it's all part of the front. So all I did was add that enamel heart and then some white um, accents with my gel pen. And this card is all finished. So there is a close up of the coloring. I think it turned out really sweet and the time that I spent was totally worth it. I love the way that it turned out. You can see the kind of unique design of this card, something just a little different, just to kind of throw your recipients off. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. All the supplies are listed below and over at my blog. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. There's all kinds of inspiration linked in the description box below, and you can join me on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Thanks. Bye.